So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Go to Antique Obsessions for the hottest in jewelry, antiques, repurposed, solid sterling silver, one-of-a-kind, handmade by Bruce and Jaja. Go to uh, our Facebook, which is Antique Obsessions, or you can go to Etsy.com and go to Antique Obsessions, one word, or type it into your Google and find us there. Thanks. Tribal, Tribal. primitive, Primitive. rustic, Rustic. burning man. Conceptual subculture for the edgiest, most cutting edge designs of jewelry today. Go to Etsy.com slash shop slash conceptual subculture or one word either by going to Google or search Etsy, E-T-S-Y dot com and type in one word conceptual subculture. You will find the hottest designs using natural stones with wire wrap rings rough, raw, genuine, semi-precious gemstone jewelry, solid sterling silver, copper, leather, organite, bracelets, pendants, chokers, men's copper cups with sterling accents, eco-friendly, repurposed, original, one-of-a-kind design earrings. Support MBN by going to Conceptual Subculture on Etsy. Warning, warning, everything I say is fucking crazy and should not be reinterpreted or reenacted because you will be either shot or MDAA'd. Warning. gentlemen it is december 4th 2017 and joining me today is a a very special guest he is uh known for uh being uh quite possibly the the original edward snowden joining me now is uh nsa whistleblower uh retired nsa uh mr willem benny hello mr benny how are you fine thank you thank you so much for being on our show uh it's uh it's uh, amazing to get to speak to you now uh You've been dubbed the the original Edward Snowden. How, how did that happen? Well, I guess it's because I was talking about uh, a lot of the things that Edward Snowden brought material out and, and uh, documentation for, uh, starting in uh, 2011. So I guess I started to expose that uh, back then in an article in uh, Jane Mayer's article in the New Yorker, and then uh, uh, Jim Bamford's article in Wired. Right. Shortly after that, and then uh, got into uh, Democracy Now and a few other shows, and started to spread the try to spread the word as much as I could. Yeah. Right. Now you were with the the agency, the National Security e- Agency, for over thirty years, right? Yeah, thirty six years. Thirty six. Uh, with the two thirty two as a civilian and th- uh, four in the military. Yeah. Wow. Now, now since then, I mean, they, they've been exposing this stuff since like 1998. I remember watching the movie Enemy of the State. Now, uh, a lot of the stuff they talked about, you had to do with, right, Mr. Benny, in that movie? Yeah, well, that, I, I, the movie was a little bit of an exaggeration. I mean, you know, some of the right. some of the things they were talking about doing from satellites were not possible because they don't only stay over the horizon for so long, you know. They could do it now with drones, though. Right. So uh, 
it's, uh, and I don't think they were thinking about drones back then for the movie. I think they were envisioning it as satellite activity, but it's that, that, that was not possible. Right. Uh, well, so many uh, revelations since then. Uh, um, uh, they, they say there's this deep state, this holdover from uh, the Obama administration that now uh, makes up uh, this uh, shadow government, this deep state. That, that's basically who's, uh, who's behind uh, these, uh, these uh, surveillance uh, activities. Right, Mr. Benny? Well, it's, uh, the deep state is uh, basically made up of some members of Congress, uh, some in the uh, administration and some in courts, and also uh, uh, the bureaucracy and the bureaucrats inside the agencies of the government. Yeah, right. It's uh, it's it's just coming to uh, a head with this uh, the surveillance state. I mean, it's it's trendy now. Everybody knows. Everybody wants a drone with uh, that records you and spies on you. I mean, th this stuff is just everywhere now. The spy technology, I mean, they could even spy on us through the, the TV or our refrigerator, last time I checked. Well, the TV, yeah, I don't think they're at the refrigerator yet. <laughs> but when the, inter when the Internet of Things comes into being, they start connecting all the electronic devices up to the Internet. I mean, it's just, that's just more ways of spying on you and seeing what you're doing. Right, and th those are some of the things that uh, that that Edward Snowden brought brought to light with uh, his uh, revelations. uh but uh, Mr. Benny, uh, tell us about um, tell us about uh, this, this hub they call a uh, GCHQ. Now uh, you've uh, you've talked a bit about this. Uh, GCHQ is like the parallel agency in the, in the UK. Right. Uh, it's the it's the NSA's parallel in the in the British uh, uh, government, and they they work the SIGINT problem, and it's becoming the major input for intelligence for the the Brits as well as NSA. Is becoming the uh, is well is the major input of intelligence for the U.S. government, and you know, they <clears throat> they have a fairly close cooperation. Uh, it started basically in World War II, although there were some uh, elements of it in World War One. It really became uh, a tightly knit uh, collaboration in World War II, where the British and us, uh, the U.S., uh, worked together on the solving the Enigma and other German uh, codes and ciphers. And uh, we and the Australians and the British uh, worked on worked on the uh, uh, naval codes and uh, uh, diplomatic codes of the Japanese at the time. That was the Purple Code and, and the uh, naval codes uh, uh, for and uh, monitoring the ship movements and things like that. So right. that was our operation. It started there, and it's only got closer over over the years. It's. Uh, and it's in now in, and pulled together in the 1950s as the Five Eyes Group, meaning the five countries that the uh, English-speaking countries, the UK, Canada, US, Australia, and New Zealand. Right. Wow. Well, I, I'm seeing here an article that says a GCHQ mass, mass spying will cost lives in Britain, warns ex-NSA chief. Uh, says here, you... Uh, you, you uh, were uh, spoken about the, the register here. Yeah, that was, uh, uh, I, I basically said, uh, I tried to put it as quickly and bluntly as I could, bulk data collection kills people. Right. And the reason it does is uh, pretty straightforward. I mean, if you're trying to analyze a given target and you have so many tools to work with, uh, word searches, phrase searches, much like Google's and, uh, and other kinds of data polls, like targeted specific things, uh, uh, then uh, the larger you make the haystack of data you're collecting, the larger the output is you have to sift through to look at. Right, it's like a needle in a haystack, right. And that basically makes people fail because there's just too much data there. I mean, I even provided the British government uh, some of the copies of the memos written internally in NSA, GCQ, and MI6 um, uh, so that they could see what the analysts were saying, that they were overloaded with, uh, overburdened with overload and, you know, in praise of not knowing and right. you know, all these kinds of statements of the, it's too difficult, we need a better way of getting at data that's meaningful. Right, and who's going to watch the watchers, like they say, right? Uh, well, we were going to do that with the ThinThread program, but they uh, eliminated the program and also removed the software that would make that happen. Wow. Uh, and so, in other words, we had uh, monitoring software that would monitor uh, the network 
who came into the, the database we had, and who, where, where they went, how long they stayed, what they did when they were there, and and uh, everything that they were uh, attempting to do. And, uh, and, and it would also, of course, pick out contributions, return on investment for uh, programs and money spent on programs, movement of money around, all of that kind of uh, action would have been monitored and captured in, um, and known by our monitoring program, at which meant that uh, Congress could look at it and uh, know exactly what the bureaucrats inside NSA were doing and where their returns were actually, where their investments were yielding any return at all. And right. of course, management at NSA didn't want to hear that. They didn't want that program in place, so that was the first thing they got rid of. Wow. One of, one of the first things. Unbelievable. No, that's, it sounds like their MO. Uh, but, Ms., Mr. Benny, uh, with all this mass surveillance, I mean, you still hear incidents like uh, two people, two, two men dressed as, as women, two trannies, driving into the, the front gates of NSA. I mean, couldn't they have the intel or all these, uh, you know, uh, mass shootings that happen? I mean, don't they have intel on these guys? I mean, can't they hear them before they do such crazy things? Yeah, that's the that's the sad part. Of that's the, the crux. No, it's just that they weren't focused on. They didn't stay. You know, if you were a police officer, you would want to do a professional, discipline focused job, looking at the criminals, trying to stop their criminal activity. Yes. But uh, all the people who did these attacks, uh, there was one exception, I think. Uh, for all the attacks in the world, around the world, and including in the U.S., there's one exception, I think, that. Uh, that the shooting in Connecticut of the young school kids. The uh, Sandy Hook. I, I, uh, I don't think that one was known, but every other one was known by uh, the intelligence agency and the police. Wow. The people who did it were known, uh, and they were affiliated as a group with something, in either connecting back to Al-Qaeda terrorist groups or other kinds of uh, looking at websites or things like that. They were all known. Unbelievable. And, go back and look at it, you can you can see that after these attacks, then they find out who did it, they came out and said, oh yeah, we knew they were bad guys, you know. Uh, that's what they've been saying all along, even in the latest attacks in the, in the UK, they were known. So, I mean, the problem is, they're, uh, that's why I said bulk data kills people, because, you know, when you bury your analysts with too much data, they can't find the threat in advance in sufficient time to actually take action to stop it. And that's what we're experiencing. That is that is so true. Now, uh, tell us about this uh, Project Hive, this uh, NSA data center they have that's so mysterious in in the, the right to the heart of Utah. Well, that was a uh, uh, one million square foot facility. <laughs> to uh, I think five uh, capital buildings could fit inside it, or space wise. Anyway. Wow. And uh, the whole idea was to store all the data they were collecting. Um, and the whole idea was from uh, General Alexander. He announced it in uh, Menwith Hill Station a few years back, where he said the objective is we're just going to go collect it all. Well, when you do that, that takes a lot, a large storage facility, and that's exactly what they built there. They had another large one down in San Antonio and uh, large storage in Fort Meade and also... Right. different places in the U.S. and around the world, so they had sufficient, they had a lot of storage to begin with, but when you want to collect everything, you've got to create very large storage facilities above and beyond what you've got, and if you want to keep it for a period of time, you have to keep building these, making them bigger and bigger, and that's exactly what happened last summer, um, about a year, a little over a year ago, they broke ground on Fort Meade for a 2.8 million square foot facility, roughly three times the size of Utah, so... And it only makes sense if you're going to collect uh, all of it, uh, all of the data, all the time. Then that's an ever-increasing amount year after year, and so you have to keep building bigger and bigger storage facilities. Right. Wow. It's uh, yeah. They're just collecting all this bulk uh, metadata on everyone. It's not just the metadata; they're copying all the content too. Right. No, oh, it's scary. I mean, I'm remembering uh, 1998, how they're, I know you said it was sensationalized, but they could uh, see you through the old TVs or, or whatever. I mean, they, they could do that now with the, the new fancy Samsung TVs. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, they can even listen to you on your phone, uh, even though you think it's turned off. Right. Oh, that's why more people are starting to cover up their little webcam, and, and it's it's kind of becoming popular to be a, a, a little kooky and, and conspiracy nut wise. I mean, we're we're being uh, 
validated here. A lot of us conspiracy theorists and the things we've been we've been saying. I mean, thanks to whistleblowers like you, Mister Benny. It's, yeah, it's not a. Uh, it's not. It's not a conspiracy, really. It's basically a reflection of what's actually happening. Right, and they and they went after you. I mean, uh, tell us about that. I mean, they, the agency really. Uh, I mean, from what I've read, I mean, they they pursued you. They uh, harassed you. They arrested you. I, I mean, tell us. Well, they didn't. Uh, uh, yeah, they uh, basically they if they because we filed a complaint against them, uh, NSA, with the Department of Defense Inspector General's office. All in channels, you know, properly. Uh, we did that in September of 2002, and it took the it took the De- uh, Department of Defense Inspector General um, about two years with about 12 investigators to do their research on that. And they came out and basically in a report that has been buried, and very few people are allowed to read it. Uh, so uh, and it's been basically covered up. But it ba- it fundamentally justified and, and said and proved everything we said and more. So it was really, it was really a, a, a devastating report against NSA for their corruption, fraud, waste, and abuse. Mm. Um, and it really boils down to having an agency like NSA or other intelligence agencies where you give them so much money every year and you don't audit them to see how they spend it, to see if they are effectively using it or wasting it or what. So, uh, I mean, that's like, wouldn't, wouldn't you like to have a job where your, your, your government would give you a few billion a year, you know, maybe 10 or 15 billion a year, and you, you're allowed to go spend it any way you want? You don't have to account to them or anybody else how you spend it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, that, but that's a setup for corruption. Yeah, absolutely. No, oh, it's, um, it, it's, it's an incredible story, Mr. Benny, that, uh, that unfolds, um, Monster Mind, this uh, U.S. National Security Agency program, again, uh, Edward Snowden brought it to the, the mainstream. Uh, tell us a little bit about this program. You already have been telling us about this bulk data collection program. Is, is, it, is, it, is it something along the lines of that as well? Uh, the program that uh, we developed in the NSA before we left, is that the one you're talking about? Believe so. It's a uh, well. It says it's called Monster Mind. I've looked it up. I mean, it... Uh, no, that's not our program. So uh, I don't know who's doing that one. <laughs> the Monster Mind U.S. National Security Program, which an automated response to a foreign cyber attack, revealed by uh, NSA Edward Snowden. Yeah, but that's uh, that's an internal NSA program. I wasn't involved with that one. Well, that's uh, that was developed after I left. Right. Now, now he, Edward Snowden took a, a, a lot of the things that, that you exposed and he made them mainstream, did he not? Yeah, he, he did that with the documentation. Um, um, I don't believe he, uh, I don't believe he know, knew how much of the documentation was the left work that we left them back in uh, 2001, which they're still using, by the way. Right. Uh, and they haven't advanced it very much at all. I think they made one minor change to it according to the... Uh, at least as of 2010, uh, when uh, when that uh, 2009 uh, NSA IG report on the Stella Wind program, which was the domestic spying program, uh, that that's basically done by the upstream collection of the data by NSA, which is the Fairview, Stormbrew, Blarney collection internal in the U.S. It's about 100 tapping points inside the United States distributed with the population because the population is the target. Um, and uh, they collect basically that data off the fiber lines, taking uh, virtually everything off the line and storing it. Wow. That means all phone calls, all emails, everything. Well, like a a phone call you could have had, sorry, a phone call you could have had two years ago, they they have it. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my God. Uh, We're totally living in in an Orwellian uh, just uh, society, uh, you know, like like you stated here, the 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 light into you you're really shining the light into the darkest corners of, of uh, regarding this secret government and corporate power. Uh, can, can you tell us, Mr. Benny, about um, the award you were given, the Sam Adams Award, for uh, doing precisely what I just said? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that started with uh, Sam Adams. Uh, he was uh, he was trying to tell the truth inside the Pentagon uh, about the. Uh, Errors they were making in assessing the opposition in Vietnam during the Vietnamese the Vietnam War, 
uh, and he got uh, he got uh, basically deep six because of that. Uh, but his efforts uh, were were part. Uh, I mean, uh, Ray McGovern, I guess, knew him at the time. I did not, and uh, so he uh, he basically thought it was a good idea to name uh, an award after uh, truth and intelligence was what he was after. That was the the idea of Sam Adams. He was one of the first ones to talk about the Vietnam War in, in a truthful way. The rest of them were lying to us, you know. You know, everybody in, Viet in Vietnam, all the generals over there. They were saying we're winning, you know. We have, you know, all this stuff. That was just basically a lie. Hmm. They were, they were also uh, underestimating the opposition that they were facing by about fifty percent. So they were only telling us about one half of what they really knew was there. So it was not a right wow. lie. And so we were being lied. And here's all these people killed, being killed on our side, and we're killing so many people on the other side. You know, and they're they're just all the thing. The whole thing was based on a lie, even the Tonkin Gulf affair that didn't oh, yeah. happen was the basis we used to go in to start and get involved in this war. So, I mean, I was crazy. Um, and anybody who tried to expose the truth was uh, stepped on. But Sam Adams was one of the first, so that was the, the award was named after him. Truth and Intelligence. Very nice. Now, uh, Mr. Benny, uh, everybody's saying that uh, about Hillary Clinton, uh, the presidential Democratic candidate last year, uh, she, uh, they're saying that uh, her emails, uh, they all got deleted. But you're saying that the agency has them all. I've read that. Yes, yeah, they do. Yeah, and they also know anybody, who, if, if, if somebody does a, a, a tap into a Britson in or, you know, hack somebody inside the United States and, and they drain packets off, then those packets go across the network and uh, NSA knows where they're going. Wow. So if they if they rush if they if they, this is why one of the reasons why I said that originally in August of 2016 that the Russian the alleged Russian hack into the DNC and Hillary and all of Podesta was was a, a false statement because NSA isn't saying we know where they went right because they knew I mean there are only nine uh, point or very few points uh, where the transoceanic cables surface in in the U S. And if, if anybody overseas wants to drain anything inside the United States, those packets have to go through those ports that cross the uh, transoceanic cables to the other continents, and those are those are monitored cast iron. So you know, yeah. it's, it's not a matter of not knowing if those packets left any any anything inside the U.S. and then went across the the ocean. Why we they they captured them. Absolutely. I mean, it, to me, it was always a bunch of phony baloney, this uh, Russia collusion thing, because, I mean, seriously, what, what did Facebook and Russia, did, was there a screen, a TV screen from brought to you by Facebook saying, oh, uh, the, the Russians want you to vote for Clinton? I mean, that didn't happen in the ballot box when you're voting. I mean, it's just such malarkey how they just uh, think we're, we're really that stupid, Mr. Benny, you know, it's and it's good Americans like you that, that really... Uh, really uh, shine a light into this darkness, into this abyss that they've created. Well, it's a total fabrication, yeah. They, they just uh, made it up to divert from the uh, from the real issues, which were the, the actual content of the emails exposed. Right. Uh, when you look at those, I mean, uh, there were any number of whistleblowers who were in jail for uh, just ha a partial part of what uh, Hillary had in her uh, email. Right. I mean, one fellow, uh, actually, who uh, was working on a U.S. Uh, ballistic missile submarine took a picture where he worked inside the submarine just to show his kids, and he had it at home. I forget his name, but he, he was being, he, he got caught at that. Somebody reported him for having that picture, and he never distributed anybody. He just had it there just to show his kids where he worked. Right. And, and uh, so he was claiming the Hillary uh, Clinton defense in, in, in the in court. <laughs> Where he said, you know, you know he, well, there's no intent here, and it never went anywhere, and all that stuff. So, but the judge said, uh, no, I'm not buying that. You know, you, you did this, you're 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 guilty. So, wow. No, so it, people who are not in the in the in crowd get treated uh, quite separately than uh, those who are, and that's why I call the uh, Department of Justice now. I call it the Department of Just Us. <laughs> that's absolutely right, uh, Mr. Benny. You know. I consider you a good American. I consider you an absolute patriot. But there's others out there that would call what Assange did or what uh, Edward Snowden has did or what 
people such as yourself have done, traitors. I mean, what do you say to people like that? And do you think that uh, that any many of these whistleblowers should get pardoned, and will they get pardoned? Generally, uh, whistleblowers point out problems and issues that need to be solved for the better good of the of the of the, of the population of the country and the world. Uh, and and uh, what the, really the, the problem really is when you have a whistleblower, they expose the warts that people are managing the system have, and and the corruption and fraud and waste, and also criminality that they they are involved with. And so what they really have to do is cover up uh, that activity, and they do that by attacking the whistleblowers. Yes. Instead of instead of trying to fix the problems, so that and here's the here's the bad part about it: if you don't fix the problems. You carry them with you. It's like an alcoholic. If you can't admit you're an alcoholic, you can't fix it. So you're always an alcoholic. Right. The same is true here in our government. That they don't, if they don't embrace the uh, the the complaints coming in and see if they're really true and if they are, fix them, then things would get better. If they don't, then they carry those problems in on uh, indefinitely. Wow. And that that's the real sad part about it. They never fix anything. That's the point. No, they just kick it down the road. Terrorist attacks. They've never fixed anything. I, mean, right. I, I would put it this way. I'm just a country boy, okay? <laughs> and in the country, we have very simple things. We think common sense, you know. And if you keep failing all the time, you must be doing something wrong. That means you have to look at everything you're doing, find out what's wrong, and fix it. Right. The first thing you have to do is admit you've got something wrong, and they can't do that. Oh, no. They, they uh, always sweep it under the rug and then turn around and, and blame us. Now, uh, Mr. Benny, uh, thank you so much uh, for, for being on this interview with us. Uh, I know you're out there in, in the Netherlands, and it's pretty late out there, you know, so uh, I just want to thank you for uh, taking the time to, to do this interview with me, and I, I look forward to having you on uh, as many times as you'd like to be on, Mr. Benny. Okay, thank you. Thank you for, thank you for being on the show. Uh, we'll talk soon. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That was... Uh, it was Mr. Uh, Will and Benny, and uh, let me see. Thank you for listening, folks. Uh, I don't know if my uh, my board here is active. Fine. Anyway, folks, you've been listening to the the Bruce Montalvo show. Yes, yes, yes. I'm on. I'm on air still. Here we go. You've been listening to the Bruce Montalvo show, folks. Uh, I'll be on. Uh, I'll be on 9 p.m. Mount Time. Uh, that's uh, 9 p.m. Time. You can listen to us on uh, Spreaker.com slash The Bruce Montalvo Show. You can uh, also follow the show on Facebook. That's uh, at The Bruce Montalvo Show on Facebook.com. That was NSA whistleblower Will and Benny. Will and Benny, a uh, former highly placed intelligence officer of the United States National Security Agency, again turned whistleblower. And uh, what what a what an interview what an what a home run interview he just did with us and uh, again I'm gonna be on ladies and gentlemen for uh, Monday.
You're listening to MBN, Montana Broadcasting Network.